Okay, yes. I'm going to tell you a story. Um, come on in. There is seats here. Plenty of seats. We are going to have to do another selfie if more people come in. <laughs> I guess so. The room is packed. <laughs> Who? Well, that puts a lot of pressure, but that's super cool to see that. Come on in. Should I wait for the selfie? Yeah, there is a. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's very interesting. I'm super happy. I'll go down, please. There are spots here, if you would like. Yeah. Here in the first two rows. Yeah. Don't leave. <laughs> no, I'm not leaving. <laughs> oh. We should have uh, booked the auditorium, actually. Yeah. Next time we do a reservation system. Yes. Take another one. Ask okay. more people. <laughs> yes. Hee <laughs> hee. <laughs> we love you. We love you. Hello. So back to my story. I'm sure you've ever had this time where it's, uh, it's Friday, it's the end of the week, you've developed this nice feature, but someone tells you that before you go on the weekend, you need to write some tests and have uh, this 100% test coverage score. And so you just spend the last two days uh, writing tests, making sure that you're getting up in the score and reach 100% test coverage. And you go on a weekend and you are happy. So everything is well. You think that you've done a good job and you arrive on Monday. And one day you remember that you did a good job last week and you are very happy. But at some point you open your emails. And what you see, you see a lot of Jira tickets, uh, issues on the GitHub. And then you wonder, what happened? I did my 100% test coverage. Did I miss something? So the question is, what if there are still bugs in your code, even though you reach this 100% test coverage? And so the question we're going to answer today is, does 100% test coverage mean that all your code has been tested, or all the edge cases have been tested? Does it mean that the quantity of tests and the code you've tested means that the quality of the tests are good enough? And obviously, the answer is not necessarily. So hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Olivier. I work at Microsoft in a team taking care of developer relations. And today, I'm very happy to be on stage with. Hi, everyone. My name is Maha, and I am an engineering manager at GDS Mac. I worked before that as a DevOps engineer. And I also have a PhD in optimizing performance for multi-tier distributed system deployed in a private cloud. And today, we're going to talk about mutation testing. How can we use it, implement it, to measure the effectiveness of our test suite? So let's answer the first question, what is mutation testing? Well, actually, mutation testing is a technique that assists the test suite advocacy and its ability to detect small faults are injected uh, artificially in the code to see how our test suite will behave. Is our test suite able to detect those changes or not? And of course, it will give us a score. We're going to talk about the score, what we call it mutation score. Historically speaking, mutation testing, the first time this concept appears actually was by a student named Richard Lipton in 1971. And he was a student back in the days. However, the first implementation for a first mutation testing tool was in 1980, and it was a part of a PhD work of a student from Yale University. So let's dig into more details to know how can we use mutation testing. Well, let's answer the first question, why do we need it? So I stated early, and as Olivier said, like 100% code coverage might not be enough. So what we want to know from using mutation testing, checking the effective effectiveness and measuring the quality of our test suite, we would like to improve the test suite. Why we need that? Because the test suite or the unit test, if you want to call it like that, it's our primary source of truth to say and to be sure to verify if our code is working as we would as we would like and it should as it's supposed to do. 
And that's why we would like really to improve the quality of our test suite. And the last but not least, mutation testing is going to help us in pinpointing the time and the cause of any regression happen in the test suite. Well, how can we do that? How can we benefit from mutation testing? So basically the idea is to inject, simulate small faults into your code and then run the test against those modifications. We call those modification mutants. I'm going to speak in the next slide about it. So the goal is to check the ability of our existing test suite to detect those changes. What we want to do is actually to make sure that we are able to kill the mutant. Killing the mutant means that the test case generated by our modification has been detected by our test suite. Then we are good, the test suite detects that change and it fails. So failing the test suite is good. All right, and at this moment, we can say that we kill the mutant. Otherwise, the mutant will survive, which means the new code hasn't been de detected or tested by the test suite. Let's start breaking those into small points. So first of all, mutant. I said the mutant, it's a change copy of our code. And you can create mutants by changing, making only what, one change at a time. Let's see how can we do that. I'm going to give you an example. It's Python. How many of you develop some Python? OK, that's great. Well, regardless of the programming language, the idea is the same. The general idea is the same, and you can apply it to any programming language. So here I have this function where I compute the square root of a number. So I check if the number is smaller than 0. I raise an error. Otherwise, I will return the square root of that number. Great. I will write the test suite for that method. And as you can see, I added an assert statement where I check that the square root for 49 is 7. The, if I run the test, this will pass. Life is great. Everything is fine. But if I want to check if my test is enough or not, did I miss some uh, corner cases are not covered by my test, what I'm going to do? I'm going to create a mutant manually. What I will do, I will change, I will do one change at a time, which is changing this operator from smaller to smaller or equal. All right? And then I'm going to run the test again. Surprisingly, the test will pass, which means that the test didn't detect this change which is true because what I've written in my test, just this statement, the square root of 49 is 7. So it's good. There is a case where here I put the condition to equal or to smaller or equal than 0. So the mutant survived. All right? So this is not good, which means that my test suite is weak. It's missing some other extra cases to be tested. How? I'm going to kill that mutant. I'm going to add extra statement to my test suite. And basically, I added another statement where I'm checking the square root of 0, which is equal to 0. I'm going to run the test again. And here, as you can see, that the mutant has been killed by the test I added. So basically, the idea, you simulate fault by changing one thing in your code. You run the test against, of course, the relevant test against that change. If the test detects that change and it fails, this is good, which means I killed the mutant. Killing the mutant means that the generated case has been tested. Otherwise, if the test passes, this means that mutants survive, which means that the generated case hasn't been tested. Well, that's a very small example about how to create a mutant and how to run uh, the test and to be able to solve it and kill the mutant. As you can see, I just showed you a small example by changing one operator, which is arithmetic operator, from smaller 
to smaller or equal. However, there are plenty, plenty of types and ways to create mut mutants, and Olivier is going to tell us about yep. it. Yep, yep, yep. So there are different types of mutants. Uh, we will see a few of them. Um, just if I have to sort them by categories, we have the value mutations. Basically, this is a very simple one. You just, change, you just change the value in your code. So you have a 2, it becomes a 3. You have a 3, it becomes a 0 or a minus 1. Or a string becomes another string. A string can even become empty string. So we change this value in your code. And then, as Maha said, we run the test to see if your test pass or fail. Then we have the decision mutation. This time, in your code, we're going to change some of the statements, like the if statement, if else, or switch. These, these are the, some decisions mutation that we're going to change to see if the test still pass or fail when we go to a different, that uh, you're supposed to go on the if, but you go on the else to see what, how your test behave. And then we have statement mutations. So these are more broadly. So basically, we can take a whole function or a whole block of code and change it or completely remove it. We'll see later that in some cases, we just take a function and the mutation, we just remove everything in the, in the body of the function to see how it test, your test behave. Just to show you a few of them, so the list is non-exhaustive. So we have we can have changes in uh, algorith um, arithmetic operators. So plus will become minus, times will become divide, for example. So this will be changed in your code, and then you run the test to see how they behave. You can have also have changes on arrays. So basically, we'll change arrays and make an empty array, for example, or put other values in it. So this is done in your code, and then we run the test. Uh, assignment, this one is a bit more interesting because you have assignment in, diff in many places in your code, even in for loops, for example. So instead of incrementing by one, you can divide by two or multiply by three. So these changes are, are also done, and then we see how it tests, your tests behave. Um, block statement, as I said earlier, so this can be a function in your code, very complicated one. And basically, the mutant can be, OK, let's replace this function by an empty one, and then, then run the test to see how your tests behave, to see if they pass or they fail, if the mutant is killed or still alive. Uh, Boolean is also interesting because we will we'll replace true by false, or even some statement like a equal equal b can become non a equal equal b to see, again, how your tests behave. And there is plenty of these. You have conditional expressions. You have equality operators, logical operators string literals, object literals, so we can replace entire objects. And depending on your language, I mean, I do JavaScript. Who's doing JavaScript, by the way? We ask for Python. Yeah, OK, cool. And so even optional chaining, something we can do and remove the uh, uh, question mark in your code. So and there are many more we will see uh, later. And just a few more I want to show you, because we can have more complex one. Um, if I take JavaScript, for example, uh, we have some like building functions that can be replaced. So depending on the framework you're using, so we will replace the start with, with, end with, uh, to uppercase, to, to lowercase, sum by every. So these changes are done in your code, and then we run the test to see how they behave. And just for the fun, one last one is the regex, because everybody knows it's not easy to write regex. It's not easy to test them. So the idea is to have a mutant that will change your regex in your code to see uh, how your tests behave and to see if you have tested, tested them well. And so you may think that it's complicated because you've write, written your code once, and I'm just asking you to rewrite your own code like maybe, maybe 10 times with the mutants. But there are people who thought about that before, and so don't panic. There are tools to help you. There are some frameworks that have been uh, created to um, generate these mutants for you. So basically, how they behave, they will just take your code, they will create some mutants, like depending on the number of mutants you want to do and the kind of mutants you want. They will just then rerun the test, they will compute them, and then give you a mutation score. And so mutation score, basically, what it is, it's pretty simple. It's the number of mutants killed divided by the number of mutants. So the term number of mutants killed can vary depending on the framework because you can have some tests that time out. Like for example, we replace a statement by true in a while loop, or you can have some errors that um, uh, that enter in this uh, mutant kill. But it's very simple. So for example, just to show you an app to an output, but we have demo after, so you will be see better. So this is the kind of thing you may have. You may have a hundred percent test coverage, but when you run the mutation test, you see that you have four mutants that have been created. 
And then on your test, two have been killed and two survived. And so that's why you have this 50% test, uh, mutation test uh, score. And this is very simple. I hope everybody understands that. But the goal is to have four mutants and all of your mutants killed so you reach 100% mutation score. Is that clear? OK, so time for a demo then. Yes. I think uh, this is the magical moment for everybody, the demo time. All right. And we have a demo in Python and in JavaScript. Yes, so. this is the surprise. <laughs> <laughs> can you, uh, can you zoom in your code? Yes, that's what I'm going to do, because I guess you don't see much. So I'm going to increase the font size to put it 18, for example. Is it good, 18? OK. I'm not losing. I'm not paying. It's a free. <coughs> yeah. Is it better? Or you want bigger? The people in the back, do you see or? Right, so. OK, great. So our demo is going to be about simple example in Python. It's calculator, all right? So we have implemented the main functionalities, the add, subtract, uh, multiply, etc. Great. Then I created a test for that. So basically, there is a test per each function for the add, for the subtract, and multiply, etc. So I'm going to run the test. So this is where we're just having the test. I have the code. I have the test. I'm happy. Well, actually, I will be happier when I see that all the tests are passing. I can make it probably bigger. All right. I will be much happier. And I think all of you will agree on that when I do code coverage. Oh, great. 100%. Everybody's happy. Magical moment when the screen shows that. I, 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 I guess everybody get, feels that, yes, it's emotional moment in our life when we get 100% code coverage. But, so there is a but. If I want to run a mutation test to, to check really if this test I wrote is efficient and sufficient and there is no any corner cases, edge cases are hidden and visible bugs in my test. What I'm going to do, as we said, we will do mutation testing. How can I do that? By using some frameworks. Thanks to these frameworks because, you know, Keeping changes the code is an uh, overwhelming task. We don't want to do that. So there is a tool for uh, Python. It's a mute pi. We can go to the official website. So there is really active uh, like development in that tool. Uh, it's a straightforward installation by using pipe install. So for me, it's installed already in my machine. And running that tool will be simply just using the mute pi and you need to pass oh, sorry i will put back to the screen yes and so you need to pass a few parameters your target which means the source code that you want to mute to mutate and then the unit test the unit test you want to evaluate and measure its ability to detect faults and there are other parameters the minus m is to show the source code of the mutant meaning that the changes i have made to create each mutant minus C for coloring, and you can, of course, get some report in HTML to better, it's more readable. All right, let's do that together. So I will go back to my Python. We saw that 100% code coverage. Let's run the mutation mute by uh, command. And uh, here, just for your information, um, actually, this tool doesn't work in Mac. Uh, me, I have a Mac, so I had to run it inside Docker. But the command itself, you, it is the same, as you can see. It's a mute pi, and then I pass all the parameters that. OK, let me do something else. Probably you don't see very well. Hmm. It's better like this. The command, as you can see, it's a mute pi, and I pass the target, the source, report, etc. Let's run it. And I'm passing, of course, the, the, um, the, co the test I want to test. It's this one, calculator weak test. OK. Here you go. 
let's read what we got the result as you can see we got as a mutation score 64 percent there has been 14 mutants created and only nine of them got killed while i have five survived and as you can see here, for example, I'm testing the square root, if we go back to our example initially. So here replace the number smaller than zero with smaller or equal. And this actually survived. Why? Let's go back to our test, which is actually that we have only one statement checking that the square root for 49 is 7. That's all. What I want to do is to kill all of them. So before killing all of them, let's show you the HTML report, which is nicer, probably much easier to read if you want. So it will report you what test has been taken into account, which is this is our class. OK, this is the source. And here's the score and how much time it takes to do that, which is pretty fast because the, the, the I mean, we have only one class. And here it shows you all the mutants has been created. So we have 14 mutants. And there is the type. So for example, AOR, it means that arithmetic operation replacement, which means that here replace, if I go to more details, so here replace actually for the function add. He replace the add with minus, and here on the test. And he managed to get good result, and he managed to kill the mutant. So this is good. While the other example, which is our example, which is this one, the square root, which survived, where he replaces the smaller with the smaller and equal, this one. And the test pass, which means the mutant survived, which is not good. All right. Now, what I'm going to do, I know each of those cases they were not covered. So the surviving mutant, I need to solve them. And I just showed you how I can solve this one. How can I kill the mutant for this one? By adding a test, which is the one for 0, 0. OK? I added extra tests because, I mean, now you will see this is another uh, uh, unit test where I killed all the mutants. So I went to each of them, analyze it, trying to add what's missing in my unit test to be able to kill it, all right? So I'm going to run again the same thing, but with my good test. So here, if I go and instead of weak, I will write good and great. So same number of mutants, 14. And I got 100% mutation score, and all the mutant has been killed. So that's great. And again, if we go to the HTML page, so as you can see, if all the mutants has been killed. So that's what we want. And at this moment, I'm sure that my unit test is sufficient, and it was able to detect all missing and hidden uh, bugs in my code, all right? OK, that's the first tool in Python. It's really stri straightforward. Uh, there are other parameters you can play uh, with in the tool. So here's all the parameters, the, um, I mean, the type of a mutant you can create it, OK? Also, there are different parameters you can see, for example, if you want to specify, to see the list of operators, if you want to, to disable uh, some stuff, even you can export uh, reports in YAML uh, format, etc. You can look at it yourself. It's, really st it's pretty straightforward. Uh, let's go back here. Sorry, not this. So this is the first tool in Python. There is another tool in Python is mute mute. Uh, so the installation is pretty straightforward. Pipe and install. And uh, it's pretty easy as well. What I didn't play with it deeply, but what I noticed, so I can show you actually in the demo, what I noticed, so mute mute, and you just say run. Of course, there is a configuration file that you need to write. It's different in, in the way it shows the report. But what I noticed, actually, that it creates less 
number of mutants comparing with the other one. So I, me personally, I prefer the other tool, but you can test both and play with them. All right. So I guess if everything is fine regarding Python, we can move to the JavaScript, unless somebody has some comments or you want to keep it till the end? Let's keep it to the end. Yes. OK, let's go for the JavaScript. OK, so as Maha sh uh, showed you, there is no one fits all tool. So you have a lot of tools that have been created to generate mutants. And uh, so let's go uh, with JavaScript. For JavaScript, I am using a tool called uh, Striker. So if I go to show you the documentation just a little bit. So Striker is a tool that works for uh, JavaScript, TypeScript, .NET and Scala. So you have here the doc documentation for .NET and here for uh, Scala. But uh, basically what it does, uh, it does a lot of things. So uh, what I'm going to show you, I want to show you, yeah, you have a lot of explanation on what it does. You have also um, the support in mutator. So depending on the language, because some languages are typed, so some aren't, some are strongly typed, some don't. So depending on your language, some of the mutants can be created. So assignment expression, for example, in JavaScript, we can do that. And so you have to check, depending on your language and the framework you're using, which kind of mutant you can, you can create. And then you can see what I showed you earlier. So um, let's open my VS Code there. Let's here. I'll put you uh, in a better theme. Sorry. We OK. So basically, I have uh, something similar to what uh, Maha has. So it's not as good, but it's uh, just a, a calculator uh, program. I don't even check the divide by 0, but that's a, te a program issue, not a test issue. And so basically, you can just run operations. And I have a test file here that tests all my code. And if I actually run the test here, you can see that my test pass, and I even, I even have 100% test coverage. So that means, do you know what it means when you have 100% test coverage? It means that every line of your code passed during the test. So it just means that the program just ran through your line, or your functions, or your statement. So it just means that during the test, it went through the line. OK, so I have 100% test coverage means that every line of my code has been at some point run by a test. Then if I run Striker, which is the tool for mutation testing, OK, so I'm just going to run npm run Striker because I have a package of JSON in which I just use Striker run, which is a common line for running Striker. There is also a configuration file where you can put a lot of things. Mine is very simple. So you just can put the, uh, the uh, program you want to test. If you don't want to run uh, the, the mutation test on your old program, you can see the, the uh, framework you're using for your test. For the reporter, Maha showed you that you can have reports in your uh, common tool. You can have uh, HTML reports. Uh, you can have dashboard. Dashboard is because there is an online tool they use that you can automatically send your data there with an API key. And um, and you can also specify in this file the kind of mutants you want to create. If you only want to create like uh, uh, number mutants or whatever, so all kind of mutants can specify which one you want to run. Okay, so let's run it. So here you can see run my mutants. So I have 14 mutants uh, created, and I have 14 mutants created, and two survived. I can go see the report even. So let's go here. Um, so I go to reports, mutation, and here I go. So this is the report I get. So you can see that I have some mutants that survived. And so two survived and 14 were killed. I can't even show the, the one that were killed. So basically you have my add function. And here you can see that at some point he created a mutant. So he just went to my code. He replaced the plus by a minus, ran the test to see if the test works or not. If it works, it means that uh, your mutant hasn't been killed, and then you're missing a test. And for example, here, I have a mutant that survived. So at some point, what he said, he said, OK, I just replaced a minus a uh, less than 0 by false, and or less than or equal 0. And then it shows you that the test passed, so it means you didn't kill the mutant. So I can just go to my test and say, OK, that means that there is a test missing. It's not a code issue, it's a test issue. 
And uh, so I don't certainly best what are these already. Square, yep. So I can add a new test, say if I divide by zero, then what happens? I want it to be zero. I run my test. So now that you see that I have one uh, mutant that survived. If I go here, you can see that the uh, less or equal to zero is not here anymore because I have a test for that now, so it's killed. But I still have a test that if I say false, then it doesn't throw the error. So it means I have a test missing again, even though I had a 100% test coverage, you see? OK, so I add another test to say, OK, if I send minus 1, uh, what happens? And then, so then I still run striker. And I go back here, and you can see that every mutant has been killed. And if I go back here, you can see that I have a mutant score of uh, 100. So this is a very simple program, but let's take a, a bigger project. Um, so this is a sample they give you on the striker website which is a bigger project, and it uses Karma for testing. There's a Chrome Home uh, Headless, sorry, which is a launch. So if I run npm run test, so you have the test. Uh, there is a code coverage of 100% too. So if I open it here, so this is the application. But if I go to the reports, you have the coverage, and you can see that I have 100% test coverage on all my um, JavaScript files. So now, if I run the uh, striker, the mutant framework, so I run striker, attack. So you will see that it created quite a lot of mutants here. And if I go back, if I go to the mutation report here, so HTML. So this is a more complex program with more uh, classes and more uh, JavaScript files. And you can see that even though I had a 100% test coverage, there's a lot of uh, components and JavaScript files which is not tested correctly. So it's a good way to see how efficient uh, your tests are. Is that good? OK, how do you go back to, oops. Yeah, I give you. Thanks. <coughs> OK. We've seen two demos, one in Python, one in JavaScript, and we showed you that even with 100% code giver coverage, that my test suite wasn't efficient enough, wasn't enabled to, to detect uh, or to show me that there are unhidden cases in my code, and that was for simple code, the calculator, all right? What I would like to say here, I recall that code coverage metrics is important. And I know everybody is striving to achieve 100% code coverage. And as I said, it's a magical moment when the screen shows that number 100%, everybody is happy. But this is not enough metrics. And that's why we need another metrics. What we showed you just, it's mutation score where really we make modification in the code and we test those modification against our existing test suite. So this is very important point to keep in mind, all right? And again, having 100% just you, it's not just because you uh, run or execute every line of code in your program, that doesn't necessarily mean that you are sure that your code does what it's supposed to do. All right? And that's why we want mutation testing. Well, yes, mutation testing has limitation. So there is nothing perfect in life, all right? And there are disadvantages of mutation testing. Uh, as you have seen that it can be time consuming, it can be costly and overwhelming for the developers because we have large number of mutants can be created and thanks to those tools that they make it automatic for us. So automation is very important. However, regarding those two points, actually you might ask yourself a question, how can I run mutation testing uh, at a scale, if I have really huge uh, projects like Google. And actually, Google last year published an uh, experimental study where they were implementing and using mutation testing 
for their code base, which is 2 billion lines of code, with more than 150 million test suites running on daily basis. And I let it to your imagination how many mutants can be created and generated to test that, that huge amount of code. So it's already just thinking about the numbers overwhelming, right? So what they have done actually, they propose an approach to how really effectively run mutation tests. So they said in their study, mutation tests should be running incrementally, meaning that only I apply it to the new code. And that should be only during the code uh, review process. So I don't apply mutation tests on overall the code base. Great. Second point, they said we should remove uh, mutants that they seem irrelevant to the developers. We should uh, filter those mutants and based on some historical performance of mutant operators that we further we can remove or eliminate those mutants that they seem not really efficient to be in our tests. So that's great. Also, they said that we should remove mutants or limit the number of mutants per line uh, of code, which means that this line of code, I don't need to create 10 or 100. For example, in the square root, I was able to create or the, the tool was proposing for replacing this is small to smaller or equal or bigger than or putting not before the condition. All right, you can imagine it. So they said that we should limit that number, of course, based on statistics, and also limit the number of mutants can be generated per code review process. So that's great, and help them actually to implement mutation tests for these two billion lines of code. Last but not least, uh, as, you, as you have seen, that mutation testing is really based on making change in the source code. So this cannot be applicable for black box testing. We reached the end of our talk as takeaway. We insist in the fact 100% code coverage can be misleading. This metrics really can be misleading, so we should not rely on that only. It's good, great to have it, but it's not enough. That's why we need another metrics, which is the mutation score. And there are tools to do that, so why not? And that leads us to insist in the other fact that what we care about is really not number of lines of code has been executed during the test. It's what we care about is about the quality of our tests. So it's always we favorize quality over quality, quantity. Last but not least, we've seen that mutant generating mutants is overwhelming, and that's why we have those tools to help us to implement it in autom an automatic way. As we promised that there are other tools and we collected them for the other programming language, so it's not for Python or JavaScript. So for Java, for example, there is the PyTest. It's really well known, uncommon, but I'm, I'm not developing in Java anymore. It has been a long time. There is for C and C++ Mule. There's for PHP, there's for Ruby, Rust, etc. And the list gets longer, I guess. Here's the list of references we have used to prepare this talk. And it has been really great to share this information with you. We hope that you learn plenty of things with us. We hope that you're going to go back to your project, to your company, to your team, telling them about what you have learned here, trying to apply it, and compute the mutation score. And tell us if you want. Send it on Twitter. <laughs> Thank you very much. It has been great to be here. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you. Um, yeah, so we have five minutes for the question. That just if you need the link to the slide, yeah. there is someone writing a bit, yeah. but there's a link to the slide if you want to find the uh, links or the uh, references Maha showed. And uh, the code is not there, but we showed you, we showed you that it's a very simple code we did in the demo. But so don't hesitate to go to the slide to check the links. If you have any question after that comes to you, we're on Twitter and we answer when you send. Uh, direct messages. There is even a picture of you already on Twitter. <laughs> so yeah, any questions? Oh, great. Hello, I have a question. Um, what is the impact for uh, TDD, test-driven 
uh, development uh, compared with uh, this mutation uh, way of uh, testing? Is it a uh, tool to hard for TDD or it's a, competi a competitive way to, to do things? You want to enter? Or do you want to Go ahead. <laughs> well, the thing is, uh, well, TDD is an approach where you run, uh, you write the test before you write your code, right? Mm. Uh, it doesn't prevent you to forget some edge cases. So I don't think it, uh, you see it as a competitor, but more like a supplement. Like, I mean, either you write a test before or after, it doesn't mean that you didn't forget any of these. Thank you. Yeah, I agree with you. Um, my question is about acceptance in terms of time and uh, money for a project manager. Do you have any hint how to sell it, how to make the pills go on? I can answer. I, can. I mean, yeah. as, as we showed you, there are tools that automated the, uh, automate the creation of the mutants. The thing that may cost more or take more time is, as Maha say at Google, they have 2 billion line of code and they have how many tests? Uh, more than one, uh, 150 say, million of unit tests. You have 100,000 yeah. million tests. Yeah. The thing is, if you have 10 mutants, you have to run 10 times these tests. So it's just the time to run your test that may increase. And if you're running your test in the cloud or whatever, may also increase your bill. But in terms of time for implementing the mutant, it's just automatic with the tool. Yeah, and there is one point actually, and the tool probably, I forgot that point to mention, and this is mute Py for Python. I'm not sure about the other uh, tools. There is a parameter where you can say how many uh, mutants, what the percentage of mutants that you want to generate. So. Yes, we have seen for this small calculator, there has been 14 mutants, and it took us really a few milliseconds. But yes, when you have bigger projects, it might be time consuming, but still so, um, some tools, they offer this um, opportunity to play with the number of mutants. I also recommend that you have a look at uh, what Google done. I think the paper is really interesting to, to, to look at it, yeah. And because you have, you have different output, like for Striker, you can output it as a JSON file. So I would recommend that you put it in your CI CD. So when there is a PR or you just deploy whatever, it runs the mutation test and you have a JSON file that you can use in any tool you use for uh, monitoring your code. And of course, try to apply it always in the added code in the new code instead of running an all code base from scratch, just during the code review process. So as Olivier said, and during the CICD and the new code at each pull request. Uh, thank you for your presentation. Um, I believe uh, mutation testing is a great tool. I will add uh, a limit. Um, I think at some points uh, for case uh, limit testing, uh, the mutant can go wrong. For example, in the JavaScript uh, project, uh, if you had a test that will add zero to zero, the answer will be zero. And I think the mutant will be zero minus zero. It will be also zero. And uh, the mutant, we will go, okay, uh, I failed. But it, it's, not, it's not a failure. It's just the property uh, of math that, that is that way. Okay, not sure I got your s example, but there are some cases where mutants can be killed. If I quickly go to Striker again, there is, if you go on the Striker website, which is cool, is that they have, where is it? In closet. They, they tell you a lot about uh, mutant testing, and they also tell you a bit on some of the, some of the times where you can kill the mutants. And so I really recommend you go there because there are some examples like I think these kind of samples where the mutant can be killed and they say, okay, don't worry if you don't reach 100% uh, mutant score because in some cases, that's why also when there is like a stack, uh, uh, like a overflow, memory issues or infinite loop, timeout, these don't count because sometimes it can happen because you change your code because that wasn't supposed to be like that. So in the score, that's taking into account so you can still reach a high score. I have a quick question. Uh, is it possible on those tools to create custom uh, mutation settings? For example, to have mutation more linked to uh, business cases or business values, and not only something related to the language we are testing? 
I don't know. We haven't tested that actually. Oh, we haven't. You, you have a special like scenario in mind? Uh, for example, when I have uh, different uh, document types mm -hmm. to the business, and I know that those tests are only should only work with this kind of document type because I don't know it's maybe half coded somewhere or and if uh, somewhere I switch to another kind of document, this test should fail. And the muta I want a mutation that could test to switch, uh, to change the document type I'm testing. So that's not linked hmm. to language, but it's linked to the business thing that I am developing. Yep, we haven't tested that, but I imagine it might work. Probably you need to test it manually, try to write that manually, and then you see, but we haven't tested that this the scenario. But that's good to keep in mind, yeah. One last question? Yes. Yeah. Um, are, are there uh, ways to plug those mutation testing in some kind of uh, tools like uh, Sona, for example? Oh, Ooh, great question. You can answer, I will show you uh, something in the meantime. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, but it's a really great question to, yeah, to make it really automatic and plug it to Sona. Have you tested that? No, but I know that at least in Striker, at some point yeah. they show you that they integrate with uh, some of the CIC, CIC. like uh, like GitHub Actions, automatically, Travis, Circle CI. So I know that some of the, te the, the frameworks work directly with some tools. Mm -hmm. I don't know about Sonicube. Um, yeah. Yes, it works? Okay. Oh, that's great. You have for Stryker, <laughs> yeah. For Striker, you can see that it works with GitHub Actions, with Travis, uh, Azure DevOps, when it's .NET. So depending on the tool, you have some integration. I think soon yeah, every every tool, probably framework, will try to integrate it because the, the concept is very useful and it's growing super fast. So we hope you're going to, all of you, implement it. <laughs> we, okay. we are out of time, so thank you very much. Thank you, thank very, you much. very much. Thank you very much.